Hello, my name is Dr. Helen Jaffer. I am a periodontist. Today I will share with you a clinical case in which a young lady came to my clinic with a defect for uh, in the soft tissue and bone around the dental implant. Uh, she had a uh, gingival recession with bone loss. Uh, so I tried to do a bone augmentation with PRF plated rich fibrin uh, to, to do the regeneration process. So we started by taking blood. We take the patient's own blood. I thought that I need uh, three tubes or three membranes uh, for covering the 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 area of defect so we take these bloods and we centrifuge it for 10 to 15 minutes according to the speed of the centrifuge here's the centrifugation and this is a defect This is the defect. We have a case that have a gingival recession, uh, have a mobility, and uh, a cortical and buccal cortical bone loss. We are, tr we are trying to design the flap, and we are doing the split papillary flap. We have papillary preservation flap, and we have split papillary flap. We are doing the incisions and while doing the incision it is desirable that you make an incision in remote relative to the placement of the barrier membrane. For example this is the, this is the area of the defect. We do the incision one tooth away from the defect here one tooth and here one tooth why because we put bone grafts and membranes here and to cause a tension on the tissue so to make the area free to release we just involve one tooth here uh, in the back and one in the front uh, while doing the incision and the full mucoperosteal flap elevation at least 5 mm beyond the edge of the bone defect we are using this is how we do the vertical incision reverse bevel incision to release the papilla and we are using the mucoperosteal flap to release the tension and reflect the flap. Actually, removable appliance should be uh, used uh, for two weeks or more to avoid post-operative trauma to the surgical site. And the wound closure should include the interrupted suture and mattress suture to both uh, stabilize the bone graft and PRF, uh, also stabilizing the edges of the flap. Horizontal mattress uh, we are using it for stabilizing the the bone graft and the PRF while the interrupted simple interrupted is for just for closing the edges of the papilla so here is the defect we are doing subgingival curettage for removing any uh, granulation tissues like you see it here, using curate.
سر جنجال و سر فزروت بليلي So by uh, using the PRF, we are increasing the width of keratinized attached gingiva. And here, as you see it here, we just made pits on the bone surface on the buccal plate to engage with the bone graft that we are placing here to cover the, the implant and uh, attach to the natural bone as an adhesion uh, for the uh, synthetic bone graft. As you see it here, this is the lesion, this is the defect. And here is the PRFs. We are just mi mix the bone graft with the plasma to make it a little bit of sticky bone. We are using two now, and after that, I made another one. This is mixing the plasma with the bone to get a more stabilized bone graft while placing on the surface of the defect it increased the tone of the artificial bone graft so as not to be separated because they are, these are particles and could could go everywhere or trap between the tissues and after that become a hard object they make a discomfort to the patient so you should be aware while placing it to be more stabilized more specific to the site of the defect you can you can't put uh, little and also you can't put too much before that we just released the flap we released the muscle tensions uh, so as we just advanced the flap coronally after that because we put materials and this will put a tension on the gingiva while doing sutury. Uh, that's why, and this is this is the PRF membrane. And this membrane is important. Why? Because uh, it will enhance the regeneration and creating and recreating the periodontal ligaments and enhancing the. Uh, regenerative attachment between the gingiva and the bone there will be a fiber instead of direct attachment of the gingiva with the bone graft and this will uh, somehow ensure us that we may get uh, our regenerative uh, components like periodontal ligaments uh, and it will, it will form a scaffold around the bone uh, to prevent the formation of repair by long junctional epithelium. It will uh, make an area for the bone to regenerate and stabilize as you see here this is the third one and the flap should be resilient enough to cover the bone and also the PRFs this is the process of suturing and the suturing should be removed after two weeks we just wait for healing to put any prosthetic overload over the implant. The patient should eat uh, soft food and uh, cold, 
whole food, soft food, avoid spicy, spicy food, crunchy food, avoid it. And uh, she should use systemic antibiotic and analgesics. And this is the end of surgery. We are covering the the defect area, and we are waiting for the healing process. This is the end of this. Uh, process or lecture clinical lecture i hope you like it thank you for your listening have a nice day